Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have this card with me, in fact it's actually a GTX 1070 graphic card that claims to be damaged. So this process right, I will try to actually revive this card. If not, in fact the main purpose of this demonstration right, to show you in depth of how I actually clean the uh, card itself, the PCB board. Things that I've actually used right, is actually the Jackie Spray 60. This is actually recommended. I've been using this for a um, very long period of time. It does a good job as compared to using the uh, Arctic MX4 or Arctic Silver or even um, Grizzly Bear. I feel that that's actually a waste. This one whole tube costs only about Singapore dollars, nine dollars, and it's one big tube. And it does perform very well on GPU dies. And I'll be do using my handy uh, screwdriver set. Then some brushes and a eraser. Okay, I'll dismantle this card and I'll show you the process of how I treat the uh, PCB itself. Most likely, I will fast forward the whole process uh, so that you don't have to actually watch throughout the whole process. So I'll start off with taking out the uh, case cover. In fact, you need to actually unscrew quite a number of uh, screws here. And it's best that you know where they are actually screwed, like the screw points. So it's best that you lay them out. I'm not too sure if you can see, I've actually laid them out above so that I know where the screw goes. Now, as you can see, right, I do not really force to open up the um, screw threads. I will normally examine them before I remove because it should be easy to actually take it out. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't take out easily, right, don't force it. Okay, right now, I believe this is actually for the fan, which I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to wash this. The owner of this card is pretty good. In fact, um, he did maintain the card. Probably I'll just do some washing for this card. All right, now I'm just going to dismantle. Um, let's see. Okay, I will dismantle the heatsink, and I'll show you the treatment on the heatsink itself too, at a later stage. Now, do, do take note that. This card has already expired. I mean, the warranty period has already expired. That's why I dare to actually um, break the seal. If your card is on warranty, please do not do this because it will void the warranty. It took me some time to actually remove the heat sink of the uh, graphic card itself. But nevertheless, I've actually taken it out. Now, as mentioned, right, do not force things to break open. Just use a bit of force, a bit of pressure. If it doesn't open up right, inspect the whole card itself or any components that you have, um, you're trying to uh, remove off. Because normally it would just go off easily. So what I did here, right, while the uh, hissing is actually on the card itself, what I did is actually I just twist around, holding the two uh, plates, or should I say holding the plate at the side. So when I see there is a notch there, right, enough notch, right, I'll just slowly pry out, just like that. And of course, your fingers at the bottom, right, you must support the part so that you will not um, have this thing here, the metal piece, hitting onto the cut. So you have to be very gentle. So this is how it looks like. Now. A lot of people would just, uh, you know, go ahead, take a tissue paper or probably take some alcohol to clean the dye itself. For me, right, normally I don't do that. I will just remove off the uh, pads here. Most likely you will be reusing, reusing them. I'll place it on the heat sink. Now it's best to actually use gloves to do this. Don't use bare hands. 
probably I'll come back later. I'll use the uh, gloves to actually take out this uh, thermal paste. All right, what I'm trying to say is that, yes, you can use tissue to clean it off and things like that. But for me, right, I just leave it there because I'm going to use this to treat the whole cut. So I'll show you the process. I'll do is right now telling you that I will spray one layer, light layer. Then once it's done, right, I will just leave it to sit for a couple of minutes. Then I'll spray a second layer, thick layer. Then I'll use the brush to brush off all the uh, unnecessary stuff, clean off the thermal paste. Then I'll proceed on with the uh, the rest of the contact points with a brush with another brush, so that it will get rid of all the dirts, etc. Or the residue on the cut itself. Then followed by I'll spray, leaving it this way. I'll spray again, leaving it to drip. Once drip is done, right? I'll just leave the cut to actually let it sit for about probably I would say a few hours. Then once that's done, right, I'll spray another layer again, make sure that all the dirt is actually um, rinsed off from the cut itself. To treat this cut itself, right, before you treat the cut itself, let me just explain to you what this does. For me, normally, a practice, right, before I plug in, if let's say the PCB itself is actually exposed and it's not covered with the heat sink or etc., any PC parts, I will normally go through one layer of this, spray, spray this one layer on the cut itself and use it. And after years, right, or should I say months, when I do the cleaning up, right, it will be much more easier when I do the clean up. Right now, this cut is actually not treated at all. So I'm just going to show you how it's been done. I'm going to spray one light layer. And before you spray, right, make sure you have a mask so that you will not, you know, breathe all the uh, chemical. I will put on my mask right now. Okay. Then... When spraying, right, if you notice this is actually uh, the nozzle tip and this is just spraying itself. If you find that there are angles that you need to spray off later on, I'll show you. You will probably need to um, use this. So spraying method, right, is pretty simple. One light layer. And when you're doing the spray, right, often people will just aim at the point. Let's say you want to spray over here, you aim at the point. It's an incorrect way to actually do spraying. You should start off from the outside all the way to the end, meaning to say you start the spray from here all the way to the end so that you can actually have an even coat. Let me just demonstrate right now. I'm just going to give a light layer. Right, it's inclusive of the contact point. So I just let it sit. And I'll move on, while letting it sit right, I'll move on to actually clean this heat sink over here. Now this process in fact is to clean, or should I say, um, to try to bring this heat sink back to shine. As you can see, there are some oxidation. Right, and also in between the fins. So how do I actually go by doing that, right? Um, now do take note that you will need to know, know that what kind of material it is using. This is actually aluminum and this is copper. If this is actually white shield copper, right, I would go ahead to make use of the um, bleach. Or should I say those, you know, you wash clothing, bleach, I'll use that. But for this, since it's copper, right, I'm not going to do that because bleach will bite off the copper and you will change color. So what you need to do is actually have a bucket with you and of course your dirty heat sink. Then a piece of aluminum foil. While you're actually doing the treatment, leave the, just crumble the uh, aluminum foil into a ball and leave it inside. And for this, I will make use of, okay, you can see this is actually for you to wash your clothes. This is actually washing detergent. So what you will need to do is actually to sprinkle this on top of this, crumble the uh, aluminum okay, at the sides and some pieces on top. Pour hot water, boiling hot water and let it sit for a couple of hours, probably about two, three hours. Then rinse it with cold water. Okay, I'm going to show you the process. It's going to be, screen, uh, it's going to be screenshots so that you know how I actually treat this uh, cut itself to bring it back to shine.
Well, I guess you have actually witnessed the whole process of how I clean the heat sink and how I actually um, do up, clean up the uh, straw. So these two are done. And in fact, as I talk to you, right, it's actually the next day. So I let the cut dry as it is. Now, for the final touch itself, right, before I assemble the cut, normally what I will do is I will use this. This is actually a lady's uh, so-called face touch-up brush. And as you can see, right, there are spots here and there. Those are actually the uh, contact cleaner. Not to worry, you can just, just leave it as it is. Just use the brush, lightly brush down. In time, right, this will actually dry up, leaving a coat to protect the uh, PCB itself. Now, you have to be sure to let it dry for a day. If not, right, there will be a lot of residues. So I wouldn't advise you to actually leave those residu residues there. And if you notice, right, I've not brushed on this area here because I need to actually um, clean it with uh, alcohol. And of course, I did done the back. Now the back itself, right, I didn't do much, just a light layer. So inspect the cut itself. So this is actually how it looks like. I'm going to clear this mess here and I'm going to fit the um, thermal paste and the rest of the component. actually fix up everything and I've yet to test this cut. The main objective of this uh, demonstration right, is to show you how I actually clean um, most of the components in the PC itself. Basically um, this cut itself, right, I'm actually cleaning the fan, the heatsink and the PCB. In fact, the main objective is to show you how I do the PCB because quite a number of you asked me how do I actually use the uh, electronic contact cleaner to actually clean the PCB itself. And earlier on, I've actually shown you, right now you can't see the uh, heat sink itself. Um, earlier on, I've actually shown you how I actually uh, made use of the aluminium foil and the detergent to soak the heat sink under hot water or boiling water. Reason is, right, why aluminium, you might ask. If you guys have actually patronized any hotel, um, restaurants, or maybe room service, you'll find that their cutlery, or should I say their fork and spoon, is very shining. So back then when I was actually as a trainee, um, you know, back then, <laughs> part-time. So I've actually learned this trick from the washers themselves. So they have actually taught me this skill whereby why do those fork and spoon look so shiny after years of using it? So before they actually pass through the um, washing machine, right? Or should I say the um, cutlery washer? 
they do this kind of treatment as in like they have actually throw the aluminium foil they throw the detergent and throw the uh, fork and spoon into it soak it under hot water for a couple of minutes I would say 45 to 1 hour once the uh, water cool down right then they will just rinse the uh, fork and spoon through the machine itself now I believe there is some chemical reaction whereby it buys off the dirt off from uh, metal point and the aluminium foil itself right somehow will react on the detergent and it will somehow catch onto the uh, fork and spoon which right now is actually not fork and spoon which is actually the heat sink itself that's why um, through the process right when I sh if you would actually roll back right the uh, screenshots on the uh, copper heat sinks right they are very clean so yeah that's the reason why I actually make use of that all right then I hope you guys actually learned something I'm going to test this card whether is it failure or non-failure I wouldn't know but just to show you that this is actually how I do the cleanup thank you for watching take care goodbye